Hi everyone, I am Avi and today we're going to talk 10 things about US visas especially when it comes to the US Emily journey. In this video we'll talk all about different kinds of visas that are needed at different steps of the US Emily journey. How do you think about choosing which visa to prefer? How do you just answer questions to the visa officer and what do you even do when you get a visa rejection? The different kinds of visas that we'll talk about in this video are P1, B2, H1B, J1, F1, O1 and EB1. The first visa that you need to know about is the B1, B2 visa, which is also known as the visa for tourism slash business purposes. Now, this is the exact visa you need to have for you to go on electives in the US. Some people already have it because of their prior US application processes or travel to the US. Some people like me need it. But usually, if everything goes right, you should be able to get a 10-year B1, B2 visa. Now, the wait for a B1, B2 visa appointment can be really long. What you can do in such a situation is get an invite letter from the elective which can help you get an expedited visa appointment. Not only that, that can also act as a proof to substantiate your purpose of visa visit to the US. You can also include to give your step 3 on your B1, B2 visa since that is one of the exams that can only be given in the US. The US visa interview process can be quite varied and frankly quite intimidating. Three things that I want you to remember is to be confident, to be truthful, and to carry all your supportive documents that you think might be relevant to the case to justify your purpose of visit. Take out your documents only once asked for. Don't try to oversell yourself. There is no one correct time. I have seen people as students apply and get accepted as well as rejected for a US visa. And the same applies for them to apply as doctors or graduates. A few important questions that you should absolutely know the answers to include Where do you plan to go in the US? Who do you plan to stay with in the US? Who is sponsoring your trip to the US? And how long do you plan to be in the US? And sometimes, even if everything goes right, you might still get rejected. But remember, that is not the end of the world. Please analyze the reason that you think you might have been rejected and apply again with a change of situation. So now once you've given your electives, applied for residency and match as a potential resident, you will be given the choice to apply one of two visas, either a J1 visa or an H1B visa. The J1 visa is an exchange visa. So that entails that once you complete your residency training in the US, you have to go back to your home country since it was an exchange visa. But there's a way about it. You can also do a waiver job, which is essentially serving in an underserved area within the US for the next three years. That way you do not have to leave the US and go back to your home country. While the H-1B visa is a much rarer visa to get because not all programs sponsor it. The essential benefit of being on an H-1B visa is that you do not have to do the waiver clause. So arguably it's a better visa if your plan is to ultimately get settled in the US or do a job in the US. Whereas for a J-1 visa, you will have to go back to your home country or serve in an underserved area. The one advantage of a J-1 visa is that it's less competitive for fellowship opportunities, arguably. Since most programs offer a J-1 visa, while making your rank order list, you want to consider places that offer a J-1 visa. Don't just filter places that only offer an H-1B visa because that will significantly minimize the number of options that you have and the number of interviews that you possibly will get. Once you do get a residency offer from a place which also offers an H-1B visa, you can definitely negotiate or convey that you would prefer an H-1B visa. For an H-1B visa, you will also need to have done your step three. So it's highly recommended that you already do your step three if you do plan to apply for an H-1B visa. Most research positions in the US are done on a J-1 visa. Once you are on a J-1 visa, you most likely will have to do your residency in the US on a J-1 visa itself. It is less likely that you will be able to convert a J-1 to an H-1B visa. Even though you might prefer to be on a certain visa like an H-1B, I would still say that your priority should be to match at a great place, at a great program that is a place where you want to be at, irrespective of the kind of visa it offers. The F1 visa is a student visa. So unless you are also a medical student in the US, this is not a visa that should concern you on the USMLE journey as an international medical graduate. 
The O1 and the EB1 visas are visas for people with extraordinary ability and they can actually help you expedite the process of getting a green card in the US. But these are reserved for people with extraordinary ability. The O1 visa pertains to temporary employment in the US, whereas the EB1 visa pertains to permanent residence in the US. These are both visas that are usually secured after residency. The process of USMLE involves you to go to the US on a B1, B2 visa to complete your electives, after which you apply for the match cycle. After which, if everything goes right, you get selected as a resident either on a J1 or an H1B visa. H1B visa is an employment-based visa which is much rarer to get, but you do not have to do the waiver clause. Whereas a J1 visa is an exchange visa which allows you less competition when it comes to fellowship opportunities. To secure an H1B visa, you need to give your step 3 before your residency starts. That's what I did and I highly, highly recommend it. I am fortunate enough to have been selected at Emory Neurology on an H1B visa and my intent is to help everyone to learn the things that I did the hard way. I hope you enjoyed the content in this video. It's been a pleasure to come back to help you all with this 10 things series. If you want to learn more or help more people with your own knowledge, then we are waiting for you to join the Medically Mediocre family. Follow us on Instagram at Medically Mediocre by Avi for more such content. Like, share, subscribe and let me know down in the comments what else can I help you more with. And remember, rejection is not the end of the world. Know what you could improve on and try again. I'll see you again on the other side. Until then, keep dreaming.